our weekly installation of Behind the Band, the show where we talk about everything and nothing, but try to keep it semi on topic to cigars. We so talk Rick about Sean, a lot of nothing. <laughs> Rick Sean, good to see you. Good Thank you so much. Great to see you guys. Yeah, good to see you. Um, I am stuck not smoking cigar again today because there are people out on the patio at my hotel and they are not happy about the smoke. Dear God. Okay. Yeah, so that's all right. Honestly, I've had a lot of cigars today anyway, so this is probably okay. So what are you smoking, Rick? Uh, you know what? I dig deep in my uh, thing and pulled out the old flathead. flathead. Nice. Oh. I'm actually, I'm a, actually going you know, with, with Cohiba's little brother, the the Bartikus, wow, okay. Bartikus Black. Awesome. I love that uh, band. I love that cigar, bro. Nice new box. I love that. Yeah. I love that cigar. Again. Yeah, man. Oh, Rick's frozen again. A Bartikus uh, series. I would put a, for me. I'm, you're, really? You were frozen. You're back now. Yeah, we heard none of that. It was just a bunch of garbage. All right, so I would put the Particus Black in the Hall of Fame. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Right, cool, cool. Well, <laughs> the Particus Black is kind of like the bread and butter for Particus. I mean, that's like right. the Particus. It, yeah. it was, it was, it was, I'm not going to say one of, it was probably the first full body cigar I, I ever smoked. Okay. Back then, you know, we're talking. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 15, I think 15, that cigar was ago, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I think that cigar was launched uh, maybe 18 years ago. So wow. yeah, so I, I probably had it in 2005. Yeah. And okay. uh, for the most part, you know, like when most people start out, you start out, you know, kind of mild, medium. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And my cousin may kill me for this, but he had uh, he had just come up here post Katrina and. Uh, and um, was staying with me, getting himself uh, sort of settled in. And I introduced him to cigars. By that time, I had graduated to bolder stuff like the right. Particus Black, which at the time, the Particus Black was, you know, that was. Yes, yes. That was very like cool powerhouse body. cigar. Yeah, so I'm not thinking about it. And, 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 and he's like, I want to smoke what you're smoking. No problem. So, so we're, we're, we're sitting uh, in my office and uh, he's a, a, across the, 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 the desk for me. I'm working. I, give him a black and I'm smoking a black and, and um, he gets quiet and I look over and uh, he just looks at me with this sort of blank look and he's as dark as I am, but he turned green. Right. He runs, goes in the bathroom and just yeah. her, I'm wow. like, what? like, what? But I mean, I didn't think about it. I mean, he, 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 right. he, he said he wanted what I was, what I was smoking. Right. Yeah. Right, right. I just didn't yeah. think about him being somebody that, that was totally new to the experience. Huh. Uh, but, I, but I tell you what, he, he smokes like a broke stove now, man. He, he, yeah. he's, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a heavy, heavy cigar smoker now. So yeah, That's but. kind of a good segue. Has there, I mean, I'm sure that you guys have smoked a cigar that was too strong for you that made mm -hmm. you ill, right? What was, mm -hmm. what was I, that first experience for you? I have not. I really? had some that sort of, uh, uh, I don't like that nicotine uh, buzz that you get from, right. from okay. mm -hmm. I, I don't even really necessarily call that strong cigars. I, I, a lot of times it's just sort of um, young, not well-aged cigars. I mean, because mm -hmm. if you right. age a cigar, right. you know, of course you guys know o over time uh, you release nicotine. So that, that takes that out. So we always yeah. you know, talk about how easy it is to make a strong cigar. It's not hard to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I won't say what cigar it is because I don't want to, you know, cast aspersions or whatever, but um, it was just kind of rough and raw, and uh, and it just kind of made me just kind of you know jittery and, and, and yeah, I, yeah. That's it, when you it, just it stop. I mean, you never want to try to power through that because there's yeah. nothing worse than feeling crappy from a cigar. Like there's really no coming back from that. So if you feel mm -hmm. yourself start to get to that point, just step away. Mm -hmm. But I tell you but what, I tell you, you know, I'm stepping into this one. This is this is delicious. When's the last time you guys yeah. had one of these? Uh, yesterday. A year. Yeah, right. okay. <laughs> yeah, because I have, uh, you know, one of the, the uh, favorite uh, uh, cigars for the garage guys that I have to keep in this, uh, the humidor is Particus Black. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. This is so, delicious. yeah. So, but, uh, you know, uh, going back to what you asked us, uh, Laurel, that was a Particus Black because I remember uh, I was new to really enjoying a lot of cigars. So, before General Cigar, I was a casual, a very casual cigar smoker. Birthday parties, celebrations, get-togethers like that, but nothing like 
I, we do today. And so uh, I remember reading it's going R2D2 again. Yeah. Or is this C3PO? Like uh, right? uh, Florida. So I was good. Yeah. And really? It's yeah, really? my cable bill. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I remember lighting that cigar up and uh, traveling uh, from Tampa to Orlando. And I had to pull over because I got so dizzy and kind of I wanted to throw up uh, from that cigar. But it was, uh, yeah. you know, for my thing, it was nine o'clock in the morning. I have a cup of coffee. I'm already shaking for the coffee and I'm smoking that cigar and it just rocked my world. Okay. Ironically, the first cigar that I ever had that was too strong for me was a La Gloria. And this was well before I was working for the company. This was probably only the maybe fourth or fifth like premium cigar that I had ever smoked. Mm -hmm. And I was super naive. I asked the employee about it and they're like well being a newer smoker this might not necessarily be in your wheelhouse I'm like oh it's fine like what how much difference does it make and um i regretted mm -hmm. that I, I took it to a, a brewer's tailgate and i remember sitting out in the parking lot and starting to feel woozy and we went inside and i had to like buy lemonade and you know those like sugar like the candied walnuts and you know cashews and stuff and like all this just sugar and water and spend all this money at the freaking baseball game just to help remedy the situation that i've gotten myself into <laughs> yeah, yeah that's a great that, that, point that it go sean no uh, and that's the thing about about you know and, and, and there's a difference between a strong cigar and a full body cigar mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's it's a lot harder to counteract the the effects of a strong cigar than a full body cigar. Full You're body freezing cigar. now, bro. Huh? He's not freezing, Rick. You're still freezing. He's frozen now. What? Me? <laughs> it's not Dang. Sean's camera, dude. It's your camera, man. <laughs> it's your camera. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be awesome. Where's he playing this yeah, yeah, bro, I'm just going to sit back and watch this show then. I'm just going to sit back and watch well, well, hell, that's pretty much yeah. what, you're, what you're doing as much as you're freezing up. <laughs> right? So do you guys have any like tips or tricks to remedy that situation? I did a video a couple of weeks ago talking about like what happens when you smoke too strong of a cigar. And one of my points that I really tried to hammer home was if you feel yourself starting to get to that point, just step away from it because you're not doing yourself any favors. Um, and for me, it's always sugary cereal yeah. because sure. the milk helps soothe my stomach and the sugar kind of spikes my blood sugar. And um, bananas are also really good if you're on the road, but for me, like Captain Crunch, at the risk of ruining the top of my mouth, you know, just tearing it apart with the, the Captain Crunch pieces, it's the best. It's the best remedy. So for the guys that are in the cigar shops that don't have hey, access wait, to wait. Captain Crunch. But Rick, you, 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 think about this. She is clearly not our age. Like she's right, right, right. out like like Captain what, Crunch. You know, Captain Crunch? <laughs> Listen, man, I'm buying like Musilex. I did. And, and, and 20, and no, 30, 40 years ago. Yes, I did. Captain Crunch. So is it, is it like Crunch Berries or just like Captain Crunch? Oh no, Crunch Berries are trash. Only the original Captain Crunch. Oh, the peanut Cap butter are okay. I, 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 I didn't even know there was a peanut butter Captain Crunch. Yes. Yeah. But getting back, uh, I uh, learned from the factory sugar based anything, uh, yes. Coca Cola's, a uh, candy bar, uh, breath mint, anything with sugar yeah. will balance out that nicotine. So you're you're d doing right. Yeah. But unfortunately, a lot of guys in the shops don't have access to a box of Captain Crunch and cereal uh, yeah. to help them yeah. well, <laughs> kind of calm down. But you know. <laughs> In a pinch, it's a little bit crude, but even just if you're at a shop, I would argue that 99% of cigar shops have coffee when they have the little yeah. sugar packets. Take some water, yeah, take yeah. a sugar packet, yeah. throw it in the water and just drink it. Get some water, <laughs> get some sugar. Um, I would avoid caffeine too. Caffeine, I find, does yeah. not help. Yeah, yeah. Um, it makes me yeah, even yeah. more jittery. Yeah. But... Yeah. That's why you should always have like a backup candy bar. You guys don't have an emergency stash of, stash of candy bars in your bag at all times? Uh, sorry. No, but I do have uh, gummy bears all the time. Okay. Yes. So cool. I can uh, eat a mouthful of those and talk I do, to you I, guys. I do, not, I do not walk around with candy in my pockets. That's just uh... <laughs> Only his, but, but his van has a, 
a lot of candy in the band. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so we um <laughs> We, be, we do, took a road trip out to um, the Black Hills. That's where I am right now. We're doing some motorcycle riding. And um, <laughs> Alex bought some candy at one of the gas stations so we could just like have snacks to have on our way here. And I found a bunch of melted chocolate bars in the backseat today. I mean, they're obviously all still in the packaging. I was like, oof, man, these are not good. These are not good. But it is uh, it is so nice out here right now, you guys. Reconstitute, right? Yeah, they're they're restructuring right now, so that's what's gonna, I'm gonna have tonight for dinner. Just candy bars <laughs> with Captain Crunch. I'm sure it's that's why with not? Captain Crunch, the very nutritious meal. Oh my goodness. Um, but yeah, all right. So we did not get very far last week on our topics, which was kind of just diving deeper into our respective roles with our brands. So the first question I kind of wanted to touch on was. Um, how do you feel like all of our personalities fit our respective our respective brands? Do you think they do, um, and why? You know, uh, I'll take it first. I think it, we all fit the brands that we work on because if you look at all the other brands that we have that we can attach somebody to, uh, it makes more sense for Macanudo Cuiba because what we're trying to do with that line or those lines. And then what we're trying to do with, uh, you know, CAO and uh, the storytelling and because we're dealing with so many tobaccos and so many processes that we're trying to introduce, you kind of need that person to, end, you know, explain to the why we're doing it for Macanudo for me is explaining the reason we have a person like you out there is to help them understand your concept of Macanoodle in the past is great. And you're right. There's a, you know, Macanoodle Cafe is a beginner cigar, light, mellow, and all that. But I'm here to now introduce to you another line that represents Macanoodle is not your grandfather's cigar. So you need that person to talk about those stories and why this brand we can should go back to when we have in yeah. my our mind that is just a you know a beginner cigar no mm -hmm. you know so. and i think sean you're perfect for cohiba i mean your personality oh, yeah, sure. like you're so calm cool collected like cohiba is it's luxury but it's attainable and right. you know it's still cool but approachable just like you are and like you are just suave and put together and you know you're the whole pack like, I could now, never so, okay, do Cohiba <laughs> yeah because you know, the, even the way you dress your events uh, because I, I lear learned for CAO I didn't need to have that suit on to speak about CAO but for Cohiba no the listen, way you know thank you but you you work you work for CAO uh uh for kind of the reason that you named I mean CAO is a uh, it's sort of an irreverent brand, so to speak. Like, like it, it's it's kind of like it's like uh um it's it's muscular in that obviously you know there there are clear references to 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 you know uh, uh, automotives and, and right. motorcycles and whatever, but it's still not it's 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 not uh, juvenile. It's like right. okay, you're a guy, you could get some toys now, you know, have some fun. But you know, still be you know mature about it. So I I, right. I, I, I think and I, and I think you fit that. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I think I think I think it works. Yeah. You know? And I don't know if if uh, if the higher ups were were well, somebody clearly was uh, had enough um, insight to sort of pick us for these things, or if it, it if it was just kind of organic. I mean, I certainly yeah. couldn't have couldn't have planned um, you know my 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 path to lead me to here. But right. I certainly think that I'm better suited for this now than I would have been 10 years ago in this business. Oh, right? for sure, yeah. for and, sure. And, and uh, you know, sort of the same with Laurel in that, um, you know, she's Macanudo Laurel, but in particular, she's like, she's like, you know, the the the, the counterculture to, to Macanudo with, with Inspirato, like, like really, really look at this story sort of uh, flagship brand differently, bam. Mm -hmm. And walks right, 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 right. A new approach to the 
the way uh, 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 the cigars are put together with the Inspirado line, the way it looks, the way it feels. And immediately you have to, she walks in as the face of Macanudo, you have to sort of rethink it and say, okay, I, I have to see what's up with this. I agree, so it, I agree. It, it, yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. I think if a guy took your place, Laura, it wouldn't work. I, I just, I think that hill to climb would be so steep, so hard. And you made that hill uh, or that mountain uh, hill. It really, uh, what yeah. you achieved in that short period of time, uh, telling the stories about Macanudo and all that. So, you know, again, you see what the respect that we have for each other. That, I hope, comes through all these shows that we do together, the respect and the love and uh, the friendships that we are, you know, yeah. forged to make because we work on the same company, basically do the same thing. So I'm lucky because I have two people that I would do dinner with, smoke a cigar with, vacation with, do anything with other than that guy, that, you know, I work with you, but my outside life is mine and I'm not going to share that with you. And yeah. we know a lot about each other's lives, mm -hmm. uh, you know, away from this business called cigars. Yeah. Absolutely. No. No. And what do you think, like from an outside perspective, the most challenging part of everybody's brand is like, you know, Rick, for you, I would see it's how do you outdo what you've already done as far as uniqueness and, um, you know, kind of that CAO culture. So I feel like you just constantly have to up the bar and up the bar and up the bar. And like, I think that would be super challenging because you just, you have a very unique line and that you can kind of just do what you want to a point. Like you don't necessarily right. follow a structure. Yeah. That's that, that uh, I think that negative, you can flip to a, po po a po positive very quickly because mm. you have the ability to do anything you want. Yeah. So that you, you just don't look at that. For you, the challenge of you, you change it. I don't have to change anybody's mind. Mm -hmm. Nobody has that image of CL. Oh, that is flavor company, or that is, you know, beginning. That to me would be harder of a challenge than what I do with uh, CAO. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think, Sean, I mean, maybe it's just scratching the surface, but I think for you, probably your biggest challenge seems maybe like price point at events, you know, getting Not people really. to, no? No, uh, so, so maybe to, 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 to a degree. First off, I don't believe any product in any category should, should and not, not, not unless it's, it's some type of commodity, but as you talk about something that's a luxury or something that is a, um, a product that's a choice, like, like if something you need to have, you need to have it. But if we're talking mm -hmm. about something that, 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 that sort of, uh, uh, a disposable or, 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 or something that you do by choice, I don't think those products should win or lose based on price. Yeah, so oh, agreed. That's, that's agreed. sort of an overcoming objection. But as, as it yeah. relates to me with the brand, that comes into play a little bit. My biggest challenge, uh, and I won't say challenge, but my biggest uh, uh, um, mission or the thing I sort of just kind of hold uh, 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 in focus day in, day out, is constantly figuring out how to expand the tent for Cohiba yeah. without alienating the existing, you know, support or or, mm -hmm. or compromising the brand. And price comes into that, right? Yeah. So um, it is what it is. I mean, as far as, you know, with, 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 the, with the cigar. Another console, surger. Um, yeah. Another you know, surger. I just try yeah. to explain the value in that uh, uh, to the consumer, but the big thing is um, making sure that, that you know, we're doing what we need to do from a brand standpoint. And I'm doing what I need to do from a face of a brand standpoint to try to constantly expand the tent while yeah. maintaining the sort of, you know, set apart integrity of the brand. That that that's kind of tricky sometimes because, you know, oh, yeah. it's, it's kind it's kind of it's easy sometimes to go after the low hanging fruit. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, there's some things that that you know uh, I choose and we choose as a brand maybe to pass on. Um, yeah. You know, just to kind of maintain what, you know what, what the brand is. So. You know. And I think that challenge could translate really to any brand. I mean, same with Macanudo. We we want to innovate and do things that, that are different and out of the box from what people would expect from Macanudo even five years ago. But to a point, we still have to be 
true to the Macanudo smokers and stay on brand to a point. So while we still want to innovate and create, we, we have to, like you were saying, not alienate those other lines that you already have and kind of still maintain the feel of the brand. And, um, you know, Rick, to your point, I think it's gotten, with the Inspirato series being in the market for four years now, yeah, I'm like, wait, <laughs> um, you know, 2016 is when we brought the uh, the orange over from our European market. And I think that has really helped change the perception. But yeah, you still get the people who are like, oh, Macanudo, it's too mellow for me. I'm like, what you knew from Macanudo even five years ago yeah. is so different than what we have to offer. Mm -hmm. and, so. and that kind of leads back uh, a question I'll ask you guys. Uh, when we're doing our events, uh, of course, we know what we do. Uh, I know about CAO. And so the questions of CAO is easy for me to answer. The challenge to me, for me is a guy that comes or a girl that comes to me and says, all right, w talk to me about Cohiba or, uh, you know, uh, or Macanudo. And so that is when I pull out my phone and I go to Cigar World and say, Bro, let's research that line ourselves because this is a treasure trove of information right here on your phone. And if you don't visit, you know, uh, Cigar World often, it's a, a great page to just kind of view every once in a while because there's so much information out there that we're sharing. And it's a great resource for any cigar that we make. And yeah. So do you find I, yourself I, I do using it or not? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What people don't realize is that is that all of us, you know, any new release from any of the major brands, we get them. And a lot of times, I mean, I may be somewhat familiar, but I won't remember, okay, what was the rapper? What oh, yeah. So, right. so yeah, easy for, sure. for, you know, instead of me calling Justin or calling you, Laurel, hey, well, you know, I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, she's off in the Black Hills riding motorcycles right now. So, yeah. yeah. So that's I just go to Cigar World, just, okay, okay, great, you know, just so I can. Well, I'll have people comment on my social media posts, like, oh, you know, where can I get this? And yeah. I'll be like, hey, what's your zip code? And I'll literally go to Cigar World, type in the zip code, and then right. give them the information. Like, because I've just responded with the website before, and sometimes that's sufficient where they're like, oh, this is super helpful. Thank you. Or I'll just, you know, or I'll respond with the accounts. I'm like, you can get them at these three places within yeah. 10 miles of your house or these online places. Like, wow, thank you. I'm like, literally all I did was go there and be like, bing, bang, boom. <laughs> and I, I think, yeah, yeah. But if I think if we talk about this, this uh, website more, it helps everybody. Because yeah. again, you have a connection with your line, uh, other lines that you want to know about. And it's right there in the yeah. story behind the product show. Uh, to me, I, I feel myself using that site more and more and more. Matter of fact, uh, we're having a, uh, a, a talk the other day in the garage and some cigars, the General Cigar, uh, made, I said, Google it. And everybody went to the cigar world. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. Okay. If you're using it, maybe I should use it too. You know, so. Yeah. Well, I do, it's not amazing. the same way that you do, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe a commercial for that, but uh, I'm just trying to uh, share with the fans of uh, our lines. There's some great uh, uh, source of material out there for you to yeah. view and uh, really get to know us, our lines and all that. So yeah, yeah take advantage. Well, and of it. It's not just our product. You know, you can go on yeah. there and read. I think I was just reading an article about like Agnorsa or like the new Steve Saka cigar or something. There's reviews right. like you know, coop reviews from or interviews from other companies and stuff. So it's not just like our stuff. It's right. like mm -hmm. a social media site for everything cigars. Mm -hmm. But yeah. <laughs> on a very unrelated note, I was at the uh, I was at the gym the other day and I was talking to one of the trainers and she's like, what do you do for work? Like, I'm not really sure. And I told her I work for a cigar manufacturer. Like, oh, my dad loves cigars. His favorite cigar is, um, and she's like thinking about it. She's like, Porta. Portofino, Portofino. I was like, oh, my God, that's oh. awesome. <laughs> I was like, that's the brand I work with. <laughs> uh -oh. So how much does that cost? Whoa, whoa, right? whoa! What was that face, Rick? That you know, it's a great, it's a classic cigar. I'll let's, let's, leave, leave it at that. It's a classic mm. cigar. <laughs> mm. But wow. there's other sizes I would choose that, that, to that, showcase. Right. 
She, I like the Puerto Rican. I love that small ring you gauge. God, you be kidding me! What you got? Oh, the, the high Park. It's by far. Oh my God! The, the king of that that line. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> all I'm saying is, ninety percent of the people who tell me that they they used to oh, smoke yeah, Puerto was always Puerto Yeah. 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 Sorry, Sean. What'd you say? It was one of the first I ever bought. Was the high Park. It, mm. it, yeah. Arguably, Hyde yeah, Park so. and Portofino are both very, very good selling sizes for us. Oh, yeah, for um, sure. For sure. But it was just funny when, like, totally unrelated, they're like, oh, yeah, my dad loves this cigar. I'm like, cool, cool. Yeah, it's yeah. a cigar I work with. <laughs> yeah. you, 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 um, you, you're never the wart uh, 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 at the party if you're the cigar person. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like you're, you're, you're always, you know, the cool person at the, at the party if you're the cigar person. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Everybody thinks I know the power of these little wanna... things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was at a barbecue a couple, maybe about a month ago, and I had brought some cigars. And um, there was the Chicago Pipe Club. They were there. And I'm like, oh, may I have one of these cigars? And I was like, yeah, I brought them, you know, for everybody to smoke. So if you want one, please help yourself. And you I started put them on talking. Zoom with Right. And I started talking to this guy and he was like, oh, you know, wait, what do you do? Oh, I run a podcast out of the Chicagoland area. You should be on the podcast. And I was like, yeah, cool. So it's just it's fun to make those really organic connections like that, where, you know, you can go for a, a social thing and then you end up with a podcast. So yeah. that was fun. <laughs> um, but, oh, Sean, I also I did a um, the interview with your guy, um, Brett, the other day. He was awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. cool. I, I, I popped in for a second. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. We have a couple uh, questions in the chat here. So let me go over that. Let's see. Um, I'm probably older than all of you and have been smoking cigars since my college days on special occasion, especially if I want to impress a girl. However, I was a smoker up to 2004 because I was not familiar with how to enjoy a cigar as you do, and still, I'm not sure about it. Um, Question. Let's see. Can you shed some light on what I really have to look for and feel smoking a cigar, and not inhaling? Oh. Okay, so he's a beginner. He's looking to like kind of the art of how to enjoy a cigar, and then you know, focus on not inhaling. I mean, yeah, not inhaling is key for sure. Um, but when you're smoking a cigar, really the you're doing it for the flavor and any, like Ricky, you were saying, the nicotine buzz you get is absorbed through, um, ab absorbed through your mouth. Um, but I don't know if you guys have any tips or well, uh, take recommendations. Take, take, take your time. I mean, I, I can't help you with it, with it, with the how not to inhale. Uh, yeah. I assume that, that they smoked something else before cigars. Mm -hmm. w w in which they were used to inhaling. So yeah, like I, cigarettes you know, or I, I never smoked anything else. Um, so I, I, I don't inhale. I never had that issue. But try not to inhale. Um, and, and maybe maybe a way to sort of uh, to train yourself not to inhale is is as you're smoking a cigar, kind of treat it like a wine tasting. Like a lot of times you you you'll enjoy the aroma of the wine. You'll take a swig. You'll swish it around a little bit. Sometimes you even spit it out. So let, you know, as you take the smoke in, sort of swirl it around a little bit, you know, really sort of get uh, 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 a lot of the, 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 the aroma, the mouthfeel, whatever, and blow out. Like, like, so approach it like you're tasting wine as opposed to smoking anything. And that may help you kind of slow down a little bit and not instinctively inhale. That, that may be the best advice. I can yeah. Yeah I, no, I think the, yeah, I think the inhaling part will take care of itself because again, what we don't do is add a chemical to make the smoke lighter. So you can receive it in the lungs because you, if you tend to smoke a cigar and inhale, you'll feel that pressure of your lungs because that weight of uh, that smoke is so heavy on your lungs. So you you kind of correct yourself. Now, maybe not inhale all the time you uh, uh, draw in the cigar, but uh, you're, that that's going to last. <laughs> For me, I would do this, uh, especially at the beginning. Go to your local shop and pick up two cigars. One is the, the Macadou uh, that we make, the cafe, and then a Romeo. Those are two wrappers that we're going to announce is the same. There's Connecticut uh, 
shade grown tobacco. One is going to be from Ecuador and one is from us is going to be from the uh, U.S. And get that flavor. And then when you concentrate on that flavor that you like, go to your, back to your shop. I discovered I like the uh, the wrapper from America. What other cigars that uh, maybe General Cigar makes with that wrapper or another line and start to dictate to your palate the the flavors of all these wrappers mm-hmm. don't worry about blends just focus on the wrappers and all that don't be scared of darker wrappers versus because uh, your uh macanudo uh, maduro is very dark but it's a mild cigar so pick one of those up and experience that sweetness uh to that wrapper so just take your th- that's the beauty of cigar smoking It'll be the, for the rest of your life to find that golden nugget, that cigar yeah. of cigars. And that talent to get there is fun. And just take yeah. your time and smoke cigars. Exactly. You know, the first cigar you ever smoke, I mean, and you said that you've been doing it since, or stopped in 2004, um, but it's not necessarily going to be your favorite cigar. Like Ricky, you were saying, you're just take the time, figure out what you want, whether it be traditional or flavor something a little bit mellower. Maybe you want something spicier. Just, I would start slowly, probably airing on the side of a mellower cigar. Um, especially right. if you think you're going to have a problem inhaling because it's going to be a little bit less intense <laughs> should that occur. Um, right. But yeah, just kind of, Talk to your local shops. The people who work there are, you know, they want to be there. They're knowledgeable. They like questions Mm -hmm. uh, in general. So go there and kind of explain what you're looking for. And they can kind of walk you through what sort of flavors you you want and uh, go from there. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, And then we had another participant kind of asking about how we feel about like the cigars and military connection. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Uh, I think, uh, you know, anybody's overseas that can smoke the cigar uh, reminds of uh, barbecues, birthday parties, get together with friends and family at the local shop. So it's just a a gateway to relax for a half an hour, an hour and go back in time. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, um, from from the the very first time I I smoked the cigar, I, I sort of got it, just sort of the process of sort of unplugging for an hour or so and, mm-hmm. and, and relaxing and and just kind of getting into the experience of the cigar so if cigar cigars play plays a part and those guys who are over there in theater or you know and, you know away from their families and loved ones if, if they can light up a cigar and just sort of relax and get into themselves and unplug for a minute yeah. and absolutely yeah. and, and, and you know and we've long you know uh, uh you know for years we've supported the military um, mm-hmm. You know. Well, and Rick even has some brands that like specifically are, yeah. um, they were curated for like military support. And I love Cigars for Warriors. I think that's such oh, a cool yeah. program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it, it's so it's like, isn't that like the simplest thing we can do? You know, you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah, it's like, yeah, exactly. Right. So it's great that, that we can do that. And it's great that they enjoy it. And again, it's, 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 it's a passion of ours. And, and it's great that, um, that that's part of the, the beauty of what we do. I mean, have a, be a part of making something that people enjoy. And yeah. it's even, uh, uh, you know, um, even more impactful when you know that, you know, people, you know, who are, who are, who are sacrificing and serving our country a- abroad uh, mm-hmm. uh, can enjoy mm-hmm. something that, that we enjoy making. That's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Well, and one of our reps, yeah. Carol Lee, she was really um, big into bringing the cigar culture into the military before she actually worked for us. Um, I don't know if you guys remember the name of the the group she started um, when she was overseas, but she basically like spearheaded this big like international military cigar club, and okay. um, it's just it's very very cool. So mm-hmm. I can't remember the name of it. I'll have to reach out to her. Uh, but, but she uh, was in the military for twenty years before she worked for us. But for me to you guys, uh, do you not group your firemen, EMT, uh, police? Uh, anybody that saves our lives are doing something for our country that we don't do. So when you talk to me about military, yes, I, I love those. And I thank you so much. But don't forget the cops, the firemen, the EMTs and all that out there. So I just group those whole groups together. And yeah. I just want to hug them and thank them. And I would support any cause. 
I don't care any cause that you have that you're raising money to uh, for a fallen soldier, uh, a, a fireman, EMT. I don't care. We're in. We're in. We're in. So I just yeah. tend to group all these guys together and group yeah, us together. The, the singular difference is, in most instances, the soldiers are away from their families. And yeah, uh, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's a great, that's a great yeah. point, bro. It's, it's a, a great point. Yeah. yeah, it is yeah. A, a great point. Yep. Let's see. Um, oh, we've got uh, Brian Imson on here saying thanks for recognizing us firefighters and, 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 um, and, and Brian, and Brian Brown. I have, uh, I still have something to get to Brian. So tell him I haven't forgotten. Well, have All right. Forgotten. Well, I haven't forgotten. they're on here, so they're listening. And then uh, we've got Brian Brown. Uh, he was the one asking about the cigars and military connection saying that they raised $10,000 for the USO this year, which is awesome. And um, that they're a bunch of sailors and they enjoy smoking cigars while they're out and about. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> so wait, um, so, so that's a good question. I've never asked this question or, 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 or got insight on this, but sailors who like, who are out on carriers or who are out on these ships for God knows how long, are they enjoying cigars while they're deployed at sea? I think they used to be able to. I don't think the uh, the uh, what maybe the uh, the captain or the uh, head of that ship can smoke, but I don't think uh, they. I went non-smoking. I think. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I think so. Let's see. He said he runs a group's call a group called Sailors and Sticks, um, yeah. and they love to smoke during underways. Okay. Oh, I don't know what that okay. is. Should I know what that is? I don't know what that, that is. So I think that's, I the think term that's when like when uh, they're on yeah. a mission. Yeah. Well, answer that well, you question can't smoke for in us, submarines. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. I think there's a message coming in. Um, okay. Out to sea out equals to sea. underways. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we normally stack yeah. up before we leave. Um, so I assume like in the submarine itself, you probably can't smoke, but you can go up to the deck. And um, There's no deck on a submarine. What you, <laughs> you can go up. Okay, you can smoke inside. You can't smoke inside, but outside the ship. Okay, whatever. Whatever, Sean. Okay. There's like... But not on a submarine. <laughs> there's no There's no up. It's not like you... <laughs> there is a bridge. There's a bridge. Okay. That bridge is very small. You know? <laughs> uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Cigar smoker coming through. <laughs> nice. Right. <laughs> Okay, maybe I'm frozen. The the the, sh uh, the submarine is just starting to get to the surface, and you can like already smell the smoke coming up. Uh, God bless them. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, so um, I have a question for you guys that we have on our okay. topic list here. Oh, if we got topic. money, I forgot about that. Yeah. If money and ob money and regulations were no object, mm -hmm. how would you plan? your like ultimate new cigar release party like what would you do we did no, it. The last, the last the it CPR. we shut it down baby <laughs> so that's like yeah. that would be to your taste ah. as far as like if you were planning it sean williams for cohiba release like that's what you would do i mean that was a great party don't get me wrong like that so, so party was money killer. wasn't an object uh, uh there's no you know uh guardrails or whatever I would hire the best party planners to just plan a party. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I make cigars. I don't plan parties, man. <laughs> I'm taking uh, 500 people uh, to the launch and in the factory. I'm going to take them to the factory. We're going to have it, celebrate it, parades, music, food, cigars, show the, uh, the fields off. Uh, if I can parachute everybody and anybody I want, uh, to uh, release his car, I would do it in a factory in a heartbeat. Yeah, I agree that I think there should be a factory aspect because I think it just brings a whole new level of not only appeal, but just interest and not credibility, credibility necessarily, but I would do like the factory in the fields, but you know that gazebo that we have in- In Mao. Um, the, yeah, Mile. yeah, in Mao. Mm -hmm. So do sort of a, just a really fancy dinner. You have like your appetizer and cigar that's going to pair with the appetizer, entree, dessert, um, right. you know, drinks, everything that's curated to really 
focus on everything that cigar has to offer. So maybe you do some of your other lines like leading up to it and then you have like the the finale and then I would kind of bring in that when you said parade, you know that parade we had in New Orleans when we were you there. Oh, Sean, you're Something gone. like that. that. Shout, shout out Sean to the Sulus, New Orleans, yeah. baby. Yeah. Yes, That's that all, was all amazing. <laughs> so I guess I can't what? play at a party. I don't know, maybe. No. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, was that incredible. Was, uh, that was, I have a video of that uh, still. And uh, I have a video of, I think it was uh, um, Ernest, uh, the tobacco guy. Uh, um, who else? It was dancing. Regis, Ernest, and uh, Romney Rami. were dancing Rami. on the road. You can road. always count on Romney to dance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. it was uh, amazing. And I didn't want to go outside because somebody says, we're all gathering around outside. I don't want to go outside. I have my drink. All of a sudden, I heard this music. Oh, m- one of the bands are marching, and I saw Sean yes. was leading the marching yes. band down the street. Like, okay, yes, I want to follow. So, this for guy. context, we had a sales meeting in New Orleans a couple of years ago, and what like usually the last day of the meeting, there's like a surprise for all of us. And so, Sean, what was like the band or the parade called? There's like a so, specific so, name so, for so, it. So we had a. Uh, uh, um, the Hot Eight Brass Band, Grammy Award winning brass band, uh, along with the uh, the Zulus, and they they led us on a second line parade through uh, through the uh, Frenchman area of uh, mm-hmm. uh, back of the French Quarter, basically. Yeah. Yes, and then we ended up at that cigar bar. At Vaso, shout yes. out to my guy Derek Villavaso, one of our great retailers in New Orleans, by the way. So he has uh, Villavasos in New Orleans East, and he has Villavasos on the Bayou, and then he also has Vasos bar on French one. So yeah, yeah. Was it was so yeah. cool. Yeah, that was, that was, that was after cool. the parade, I left at you guys and I went to um, uh, down to uh, Bourbon Street and ate some um, oysters okay. by myself. By yourself. By myself. Yeah. You do yeah. that a lot though. Like like he I he, do. He, he is famous yes. for the Irish exit. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. 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 We'll eat nothing at dinner. But then right. disappear to go eat on your own. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because like a, I'm like a shooting star. I'll give you everything until you say it ends at ten. At ten oh one, look for you're me. You're gone. I'm not there. I am gone. You had my best. What you want to end up after ten o'clock is the the you know the second best, and I'm never yeah. going to show the second best to you. <laughs> So. Fair enough. Fair enough. Although I feel like after a night of drinking and smoking, I don't know, oysters would probably not be my top choice. Mm. I don't know. See, they, I bought some, I don't remember what it was. It was like barbecue of some sort on like a street vendor. And it was wonderful. It was like one thirty in the morning and they had whatever street food we stumbled upon. Sean, I actually think I was with you at this point. Yeah, I, the only I, thing I is open and, on and the came street back food. And uh, I, I forget the bar, but it was where Jonathan Herring played drums. Right. Andres was there. Yes, but then we went to a different bar. It was after we had left that one. I don't remember after you that. You didn't go to Lucky Dogs and eat uh, some uh, uh, hot dogs well, you don't, on the. You don't go to Lucky Dog. Lucky Dog comes to you as a car. Yeah, I love that. I love that. <laughs> I love Dude, that. listen to me. I'm 50 years old. Grew up in New Orleans. I've never had a damn Lucky Dog from that car. Oh that my car. God! What? The darker the water, the better. Oh, if oh. that water is oh. filthy, that um, that hot oh. dog. I want the last hot dog, the one you started that day with, that ends up just floating around on the side. Coming from the germaphobe, you want oh, the last oh, hot dog that's yeah. been sitting out all day. Oh. <laughs> And that juicy liquid that looks like uh, something that bubbled up from the, the because prison. Because it did. It oh it. That's what it did. Yeah. No. Bro. Um, oh, it's just a taste to me is heaven. Yeah. So. Yeah. So uh, that's uh, to me. To me. What is your. Yeah. If you. Uh, if you have to have your last dinner, what would your last dinner be? And what would be your cigar? So. You're in prison. They come to you. Is that okay? Before you walk out, it all comes back to prison. But if you're okay. in prison, 
So wow. what would be your last meal and uh, drinks, uh, uh, desserts, and what would be your last cigar? Wow. Hmm. Are you? I, I, I could start if you want me to. You, okay, you yeah, you start. So I mean, uh, me and my wife makes these a little thin breaded uh, uh, steaks and uh, chicken called cutlets. And they mm -hmm. are the bomb. So I would have a plat of cutlets uh, and then black beans and white rice. My uh, family likes yellow rice. That's so that bad. And then uh, for yellow dessert, rice? I have a crispy cream donut. And I would drink iced tea with my meal. And then my <laughs> last cigar I would smoke would be maybe to go full circle, a Fuente A5 weight, uh, my first cigar I've ever smoked. So I would end my chapter with that cigar. So cutlets, black beans, and white rice, a side of uh, crispy cream donuts, only hot, and mm -hmm. iced tea. And Which Fuente. donut? Just like the traditional glaze? Just the, just the glaze, the okay. Pyro House. Hmm. So what would be our, your dinner? of choice you Laura or me <sighs> I don't know I'm struggling so I think I'd have to have a few things though right um oh yeah yeah, yeah. can it be it's like a whole board? Yeah. 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 yeah you can yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I would have some uh some char some char grilled oysters from Drago's okay mm -hmm. uh, all right on. I probably have uh uh a hot sausage and cheese po' boy from guys okay Mm -hmm. Another egg. and the so, shrimp or the beef, hot sausage. It's it's a uh, oh, okay. I'm, like I'm pretty sure it's pork, but it doesn't matter. It's a, okay. It's, okay. It's it, it's okay. it's patents. Patents is the brand. It's patents hot sausage. It's a patty with uh, the American cheese dressed on French. Really, I'll probably have that. I have some uh, oysters from uh, charcoal oysters from Dra Drago's, and for dessert, man, that's uh, that's tough. If you say a, a, a probably, like a, a fruit, I probably, I probably have, have have the wife do a, a, a chocolate chip pecan pie with uh, with a scoop of ice cream. Mm, okay. Uh, okay. Your uh, last cigar? Oh, it'd be a, a 2019 Spectre. Oh, you're going out like a champ, huh? Yeah. Why not? Right. <laughs> 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 all right <laughs> um so given that we can do a bunch of different things i'll still keep it under control so i would start out with just a very elaborate charcuterie board all the best cheeses okay. like a 10 year good, sharp good. cheddar you yeah, know a yeah. sharp cheddar you barely touch and then it just crumbles right. so somebody um, in this trio has culture she's going with charcuterie yeah, uh, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. No, we haven't gotten into the rest of the stuff though okay we only have um, 10 more minutes. You know, and um, my favorite snack is to do like a buttercracker and then goat cheese and then either fig or sour cherry jam on top. So I would have a little array of those in my, my charcuterie board and some of the nice like, you know, cured peppered. Um, Remember you know, like you're in prison. I mean, your prosciutto. Wait, no, it doesn't matter. What do you mean? Yeah, you know, you know, I don't want to, you know. What's I'm the not question? You're in prison. Remember that. I'm not going to okay. go out like a bitch and order some, uh, you know, the cheese and all that. I want the other guys to see. Hey, 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 bro. You, you know what? Right, it's my last meal. There's no stipulations. Break. What? Hey. No. Okay. It's I, it's your last meal. <laughs> yeah, you're, it's you're my right. last freaking meal. Okay? Yeah, okay. So I would have my fancy ice cream board. She was fig jelly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sour cherry and fig. All of my cured meats. All of my fancy cheeses. Okay. And then there's this, our favorite Chinese restaurant does the absolute best dumplings, fried dumplings in the world. Emperor of China. Okay. I would have okay. Emperor of China fried dumplings. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, um, honestly, I would probably just do like, like a dry aged ribeye and some au gratin potatoes. From where though? Um, mm -hmm. From our Who's grill making this? It's the best. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> He's going to be crying. 
You know he's going to be crying cooking that last steak for you. Yeah. In that, in I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I make some killer au gratin potatoes, so I would sure. I would need like my own little kitchen. No, okay. and then probably for dessert, creme brulee. But then, like the final final thing would be just chips ahoy cookies. All right. So, are you, what are you drinking to chase all this beautiful <laughs> stuff down with? Uh, uh, wine. With, a beer, with, a bourbon. The cheese, with the cheese, I would do probably a Bordeaux. And then okay. with everything else, just iced tea, unsweetened iced tea. Okay. Um, and then my cigar would be <sighs> probably a vintage 97. Because, you know, it's one of my favorite cigars. And I yeah. think that after everything I've eaten... And everything that, like, I feel connected with the brand, it just, it feels right. It feels right to have that cigar, like, be the end-all, be-all cigar. All right. I can dig it. Yeah. Yeah. I think my dinner won. Uh, I think my dinner is <laughs> your, the best your dinner. dinner. Did not it's win. simple. It's simple. <laughs> but uh, it's, too it's, simple. Really... it's too simple. It's too simple. Okay. Yeah, why, All right, so yeah, one why, more right? question for oh my you guys. God. Okay, one more question. That last cigar that you have, uh, are you more pissed off the way you cut it or the way you light it? What do you think is more important to you, the way you cut your cigar or light your cigar? Because if you light it wrong, uh, if it's lighting, a good blade, lighting is you know, more important. Lighting the yeah. cigar is more important. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree that lighting the cigar is more important, but I'm okay. less inclined to flub the light than I am the cut. I, okay. Okay. Yes. But, I, I mean, agree with you. Ninety percent of the time, if a cigar is not burning right, mm -hmm. it's because somebody didn't light it right. So that, that's important. Yeah. Sean, but that's I, a, a good uh, a roller that will correct itself because I'm always uh, getting uh, uh, kind of called to the. Uh, the arena when I like a cigar because I always have one area not lit uh, perfect. And so, but yeah. I was, you know, I trust the rollers, it'll correct itself. Uh, I believe lighting to me is most important because we're doing so many wrong things, lighting the cigars, putting that torch too close to the uh, cigar, burning that mm -hmm. uh, tobacco and all that. So yeah. I think it's going to affect your uh, overall uh, smoking yeah. experience. And uh, you can get uh, kind of past that bad cut. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, also, Sean, you had mentioned oysters from Drago's, and I wanted to ask about that because Drago's is like the place to go for oysters in New Orleans. But it is so, well, there's the a home. few, but 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 Drago's is like the barometer by which. The okay, because I enjoyed Drago's, but I also didn't know if it was like overrated. It was kind of just like a touristy thing, or if people who are actually like from New Orleans like Dracos, okay. The, the, the only reason uh, 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 ever I would step into the Hilton Riverside is to go to Dracos. Okay. Yeah. Dracos um, is, is legit that good, yeah. There's some places that, 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 are, that are good, that'll do, but if given a choice, if Dracos is available, I'm going to Dracos. Um, <laughs> oh, also somebody said that you need to name a drink and then they recommend they recommended the hurricane from Pat O'Brien's. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. touristy. Yeah, that's, that's too touristy. sweet. I don't like that hurricane. That, that's touristy. That's it's too syrupy. Yeah. I don't um, have a, uh, uh, I don't I, I'm I don't know if I have a drink drink. Um, you know, I I, I I I I don't I don't think I have like a bourbon that would have to be my last bourbon that I drink. No, There's maybe no. a few that um you know, just because it's sort of my regular rotation, just for familiarity, I maybe want that to be it. But um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And then um, somebody was asking what our, let's see, I don't want to say somebody. Um, Brian Brown was asking what our favorite cigar story is. I find that difficult personally because I cigar feel like story? there's so many different cigar stories. Right. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think. About? Uh, yeah, that is something we can uh, open up uh, next week with because I think that we all have some stories yeah. that we can share. 
Uh, but well, they're longer than the time. Story yeah. As far as like a travel story, an event story, or whatever touched you. Uh, it, maybe yeah. it's that it, you know, because I have one of a uh, a lady that I'd met in Europe, and I would love to share that story with you guys. But it's kind of long, and so, but uh, maybe uh, that's you, fine. You, you know, we can that throw down. that over the fence because I think uh, next week, uh, if we open up with that, I think uh, we can really get some insight uh, how you know these cigars touch our, our lives sometimes yeah agree yeah. so we can definitely talk about that next week brian so we can properly formulate the story yeah. and figure out exactly what we want to talk about um i have one more question for you guys but we're gonna address someone from the chat section um asking is there a reason that we don't use a lot of figurados for our lines he loves all of our brands but wish we had some different shapes like figurados and perfectos um, I'll answer that. I'm, I'm personally not a big fan of Figurados. Um, I'm pretty boring when it comes to, um, you know, um, the Vitolas. I mean, I, I, you know, my favorite size pound for pound is the Toro. Um, yeah. So mm -hmm. it says a lot yeah. about me, um, but, uh, I'm not, I'm just not a huge fan of Figurados in general. Um, unless, you know, there, 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 there's, uh, an instance where it really, really, uh, uh, distinctively adds a different experience to smoking a cigar, and, mm -hmm. and 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 it's been rare that I've seen that to be the case. Yeah, and it also requires a lot more work and skilled rollers, so they're more yeah. expensive. They take longer. Which we have that. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. and we do that... like you, the what's the the Torcedor we released from Hoyo. That was a limited right. release. That was Figurado, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For uh, us, uh, for the business side of uh, the answer is because of sales. If you look at your sales for any cigar, any company, any shop out there, they'll say 90% of my sales are just regular style cigars. Yeah. Uh, and the Figurados are something that's It's a special. Shell cigar. It's yeah, a it shell really cigar. is a yeah. special cigar. So that's the reason that manufacturers don't gravitate more often to these uh, unique sizes because – uh, again, we can roll them all day long. We can sell them all day long. But uh, when we look at the numbers, the numbers just dictate to us the sizes, the ring gauges, the length and all that. It's just 90% of the time, it's just a regular cigar, a round cigar. Yeah. And then we can break it down, the, uh, the size and the, the gauge and all that. But uh, at the end of the day, all you need to do as a cigar uh, guy stand by that shop's register and watch all these cigars and march out of that humidor and you'll see wow they are these are round cigars yeah yeah so good question right. but uh, the truth of that question if there's more need for it we can do more of those sizes mm -hmm. and then kind of end this uh this little session here how would you sell the cigar smoking experience to somebody who doesn't smoke cigars camaraderie yeah um camaraderie, yeah the connection with cigars it's just it's 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 there's very few things in the universe like yeah like the connection between cigar lovers is this is this a different thing yeah for me uh, it would uh, it's a yeah for yeah. yeah, it is. And for me, uh, it would be, do you like to chill out once in a while, just disconnect and read a book or enjoy a movie or smoke a cigar? So what I'm saying to you is uh, cigars allow you, I don't know why, your mind takes over and just relaxes you. And so if you're searching for that little hour of vacation, a little hour of release, from this crazy world we're living in, try a cigar because it, it will yeah. just automatically do that. And then the benefits of smoking a cigar is going to gravitate to some friendships that you can make and you're going to have for the rest of your life because that's a small niche uh, group that is cigar mm -hmm. uh, smokers. And once you're in that uh, little niche, you'll love the people. Yeah. And that's a good point. I mean, it's, it's like a daily vacation, you know, you're not, yeah. you don't have to take 
three days or a week or two weeks or whatever. I mean, you can go at the end of the day, sit down, whether it be a book, a movie, a friend by yourself in your head with a cigar. I mean, right, it's, right. it's can be simultaneously so social, but also just like the mental decompression yeah. and yeah. the solo enjoyment experience that you may need after a hard day or a hard week. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, we all been in the shops that you look at these guys, the way they cut their cigars, it is a routine. And they, the way they mm-hmm. light it, and they, they, they're not talking. They're re- really focused on just lighting a cigar. And then you see that smile, that first puff, and then they're back connected to everybody. But that's in the zone. You get in that zone, and all of a sudden, bro, ugh, just uh, give me a, a couple minutes. Let me cut my cigar, light my cigar. I'll be right back with you. Yeah, exactly. All right. And for our final right. question, would you always mm-hmm. have to wear, would you rather always have to wear wet socks or sleep on scratchy bed sheets? Ooh. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> scratchy bed sheets for me. Yeah. Wet okay. socks okay. just turn my stomach for some yeah. reason. Yeah. I'll Fair enough. Scratchy yeah. bed sheets as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would probably just and avoid you? wearing socks. <laughs> I just I wear heels most of the time anyway and sandals. So I would probably yeah. take wet socks and just never wear socks. <laughs> right. We can't you can't do that. You can't pick <laughs> one. Says? Not, you know? Yeah. Well, no, in I that would, case, neither. That's like saying no. I would sleep on a bed with no sheets. I mean, come on, you can't. Yeah. No, okay. If I had to choose, like if it was actually always wearing wet socks or always sleeping in scratchy bed sheets, it would have to be bed sheets. I don't think I could do wet socks what about you guys in the chat for participants what do you think scratching bed sheets or wet socks <laughs> something we all right. uh, learned about it yeah uh but uh remember what i'm taking away from uh, today is a uh, c- uh, cigar world uh a great site to visit uh a lot of information so please do yourself a favor revisit every once in a while uh and the visit cigar keep world up on us and- yeah for sure yeah yep well, we had a couple people respond. They agree, bed sheets. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now I can sleep better tonight. No way. And then um, oh. our homework for next week is to formulate a cigar story. Um, mm-hmm. It can be funny or impactful or, I right. guess, bad if you want it to be but that's not really fun um so as always thank you to all of our participants who were here we really appreciate this this is fun for us we hope it's fun for you um rick sean it's always good to see you guys miss you guys take care see be careful soon. out there girl and i'll Will see do. you uh, next week all right, all right. yeah be careful all right bye-bye bye